This video looks at one of the ways in which art can change people's lives for the better by changing the relationship of the subject to traumatic events in their past. In her autobiography, InfinityNet, the Japanese artist Yayoi Kusama speaks of the childhood trauma of incessant beatings by her mother and her father having sex with family servants in their home, something which Yayoi witnessed as a toddler. Yayoi Kusama grew up in the mountain-encircled city of Matsumoto, dreaming of a world beyond. In her autobiography, she relates that after having seen her father having sex, that fear entered through the eyes and ballooned. She talks of a hatred and fascination for sex, presenting early sexualized behavior, charging the neighborhood boy's money to see her dancing naked, and also speaks of how she hated the shape of the male sexual organ and was repulsed by the female organ as well, explaining how she drew vaginas that had been chewed by dogs and trampled underfoot, or penises that were smeared with cat excrement. Yayoi's symptoms of trauma allowed her mother to project her rage at her husband onto the young girl. When you have four children, one of them can always turn out to be utter trash, her mother said. The trauma of witnessing her father's sexual activities and being the victim of her mother's violence soon began to manifest itself in psychotic episodes. Yayoi began to experience hallucinations in which flowers, violets, with human faces were talking to her and a dog was barking at her in human words. Yayoi herself links the effects of her trauma to her art. After these hallucinations, she would draw what she had just seen and recreate them with paint. She also states, I am convinced that my hatred and fascination for sex, which I had harbored ever since early childhood, was the motivating force that propelled me into the Kusama happenings. Yayoi studied art in Kyoto for four years, but five years later left Japan for Seattle and then in 1959 moved to New York, where she was plunged into abject poverty. But she started producing her Infinity Nets series. The works are records of a therapeutic process of repetitive gestures of black and white paint, creating a net in which hypnotic serenity drew the spirit into a vertigo of nothingness. For Yayoi, this process, and later the creation of dot canvases, was one of dissolving the trauma of her life by negating its time in the context of the infinite. As she says, she found self-obliteration in the works, aiming to pluck her spirit from the Stygian pools of emotion and fling it beyond eternity. Yayoi relates a moment in her youth, when she discovered this phenomenon. One day, after gazing at a pattern of red flowers on the tablecloth, I looked up to see that the ceiling, the windows, and the columns seemed to be plastered with the same floral pattern. I saw the entire room, my entire body, and the entire universe covered with red flowers. And in that instant, my soul was obliterated, and I was restored, returned to infinity, to eternal time, and absolute space. In 1961, Yayoi began making what she called a kind of self-therapy in the form of very numerous soft sculptures of phallic shapes to heal the wounds in her heart and little by little escape the fear. Similarly, in 1967, Kusama began to organize, but not participate in, what she called the Kusama Happenings. These originally started as group sex events in New York's gay and lesbian community and were performance artworks of liberation. As Yayoi says, free sex is about confirming the existence of others and forming a connection through the most human of behaviors. You could tear down the barrier between self and other. The happenings developed into more politicized social protests, for example, against the Vietnam conflict. 
Appalled, after returning to the entrenched patriarchal society of 1970s Japan, Kusama framed the happenings in terms that echoed her childhood domestic trauma, offering a cathartic liberation from bitterness, anger, and violence. As she says, the wife whose husband has left her weeping should herself go and participate in an orgy. By the mid-1960s, Kusama had begun to create her mirrored infinity rooms, in which mirrors reflect mirrors to create an infinite regress, and at the same time began to use flashing lights to create what she called a Shangri-La, a configuration which Yayoi still creates today, such as in this exhibition at the Tate Modern in London. <laughs> 